And so we conducted a survey of 4,000 individuals in the UK and in the US. We also spent time with 26 individuals in depth. And what we found from that was that people overwhelmingly found when they wore the technology, they felt more productive, happier, sexier even. Um, and in the more in-depth studies, we revealed kind of a more nuanced thing to that. Six different archetypes, uh, different representations of, of people that use these technologies and how they use it. So one of the archetypes we identified was called the finish line fanatic, and that was the, somebody who responded very well to those gamification cues, was driven by it, and were looking for yet more challenges, and that uh, they, it almost killed them if they didn't meet the, uh, the standards that they set for themselves every day. And so it was driving them forward in lifestyle, in health, and, and also in performance. I think it's just at the very earliest stages, wearable technology is going to get more embedded and diffused into every aspect of the economy. Uh, it's going to disappear as a particular sector of tech and just become part of other things. It's going to be smaller, more fashionable, cheaper, more accessible, and, and more ubiquitous. It was a kind of conflicted psychology. So 20% wanted to ban Google Glass from public places, and 20% would be willing to share their data with government. And so you saw individuals that you know, were really concerned about the implications of these technologies. But I think a lot of those concerns go away when the technology is basically invisible. Uh, banning something that you can see is one thing, but trying to ban uh, something that's immersed in everything that you wear and do is another challenge. The controllers and the people that sort of wanted to harness the power of these things, it starts to become part of themselves. The quantified self isn't just metrics about you, it is you. And, and when people start to get access to that kind of data, then I think there are real challenges about how you separate yourself from the data. You become immersed and, and one with your own data. So we've been working with Rackspace, we're in phase one is complete, phase two is now the human cloud at work. And the implications for that are how do you map biometric data from the body to performance measures that come out of systems within the organizations, whether that's sales performance, you can take somebody and analyze their levels of anxiety and concentration and their sales performance and you can tell whether they perform well under stress or not. There's an enormous range of risks and there's an enormous range of opportunities in this area. And yeah, I mean, one of the things is, you know, we're used to being in assessment and selection organizations saying that they want to understand the profile of the candidate. Part of that profile is now going to include their biometric data, which will be correlated with other measures of their performance and productivity in the workplace. Footfall data is really, really valuable at the moment and you can segment down to a particular location and understand detailed demographics uh, because you're not having people self-report but you're getting primary data from devices like your mobile phone. That's really valuable at the moment. But with uh, wearable technology, the opportunities are exponentially more in that sector and the opportunities to understand the unique qualities of every individual in every location all the time are suddenly available. And for consumer behavior, uh, that's a kind of nirvana. So the implications for brands are that you can get detailed analytics and insight into consumer behaviors that would never previously been accessible before the emergence of these wearable technologies. At the moment, uh, Google and Samsung and Apple and Rackspace, these are companies that are at the highest level of this space and, and, and they're, they have an opportunity to create immersive solutions. There's a big issue with wearable tech that all the devices are disconnected from each other. We're looking for uh, the larger organizations, the larger players in the space to come forward with more integrated and immersive solutions.